six o'clock. <laughs> and uh, uh, Gary is no stranger to us uh, programming. You were on at uh, VMworld. Yep. You're on Estrada. You're here. We you're, see. We keep running into each other. You're awesome. We love you. You've been on the cube multiple times. You're a writer. Yeah, you're doing you're, a great job. You're an executive so we're, at we're Fusion IO. Fun. And uh, you're, <laughs> I mean, you've done. A, you're a podcaster. You're a video star. You're an executive at Fusion IO. You're in the storage business. And that was just last week. Entrepreneur. <laughs> so what are you? What are you doing today? Well, uh, so today I'm here with Fusion IO. We're we're sponsoring uh, SNW. We have a big booth. You got some candy um, this here. Is one of our uh, products. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if we can fit that into the the machinery yeah. here in the video. I'll station, do the I'll do the whole Vanna thing here yeah. later. But um, yeah, so the demo just to to share with folks who might not have a chance to be here in person, uh, the demonstration we're doing today regarding our uh, Fusion IO drives is that we have this gigantic video wall, and the video wall is supported by 20 servers each server is serving 225 video streams so that's a total of 4500 video streams coming off a single fusion io drive product now that product is a little bit different than this one can um, we get can we get that for this uh, qos for our bandwidth yeah <laughs> <laughs> come on you guys are the ones stealing the connectivity so uh well no this is because it's just local this is just video oh. streaming locally okay so, so what I am i showing here we're gonna go both so this is real our, quick um, then we'll go back to your thing yeah sure this is our io drive octal product Oh, sorry, the IO Drive Octal is in the uh, uh, demo booth. This is our IO Drive Duo. So this product is uh, a PCIe-based flash memory card that can go inside a data center server and basically be used to accelerate databases and applications. Now, it's flash memory-based, which is obviously much faster than traditional rotating spinning disks. And the real fun part about what's happening right now is we're seeing this trend of taking the process-critical data or the active data and putting it as close as possible to the CPU. You know, we went through this wave, really part of the storage networking industry association about centralizing storage external to the servers. You know, first we had it internal to the servers, then we externalized it. Now we're finding that in order to get the performance that's needed, we have to put it back to the CPU. It also has to be in the same kind of silicon that we have with the CPU to match up the speeds and feeds. And you know, today's servers, they're dealing with more data, they're dealing with more connectivity. People are coming in through every ma manner possible, not only just computers, but laptops and mobile phones. And nobody has any patience. We need everything right away. Yeah, yeah. And so these, uh, these IO drives that we uh, deliver to customers, they can place them in their data center servers, speed up their Oracle database, their Microsoft SQL Server database, or use it for virtualization. Uh, VDI, as you guys know, is a huge hot topic these days, and uh, we're finding a lot of folks who are able to, to deliver more virtual machines per server using this kind of uh, product. So that's, you know, a quick overview of what's... But it's what's interesting, happening. the trend you talk about, We for a decade and a half, we pushed function <coughs> out yeah, to you the know, other side of the channel, and exactly, now it's coming back. Exactly. And, but the difference is, this time it's persistent. This time it's persistent. Right? Well, it wasn't you know, before, so what does that mean? Well, to, let's go back, I mean, we'll do a little quick history lesson, because I think it's kind of fun, and, and, you know, all this started at the Storage Network industry association oh I don't know 12 13 14 years ago so what happened is we had servers with disk drives inside them and that was the model and the way to get performance out of that infrastructure was to use more disk drives string them all together but if you need all those disk drives in a single server you can only fit so many in that server so you know part of the impetus for externalizing the storage was performance because once it was external we could put dozens or hundreds of drives together, have that performance, and share that across multiple Tons servers. of I.O. bandwidth. And exactly. And so, and certainly there were other management benefits to that as well. Yeah. Sharing. The sharing, sharing, right. But the idea was, now we have that performance. Well, today, again, the world has changed a lot. The internet uh, grew just a tiny bit over the last 12 or 13 <laughs> years. And so, more data, more connectivity, uh, need for speed. And so now what we find is, if the server is dealing with a request and it has to turn around and you know go get that from the SAN that's back at the other end of the room, the latency is just too much of an impediment. So by now taking the process critical data and putting it right into the server uh, using an IO drive, we're finding that we're able to get the performance improvement that people need to meet these kind of workloads. And what we're calling this is this is really, we wrap this up in sort of data decentralization, where you can, you, you know, we, we wanted some of the data that was centralized, but now we want to decentralize some, just like we've decentralized CPUs. So another interesting analogy to, uh, to think about here is with the mainframe era, all of the CPUs were in the mainframe. And we had these dumb terminals, essentially, at the other end of the wire. Well, when we went to client server, we kept some CPUs at the server, but we put some CPUs in the client, desktop computing. 
I mean, companies like you know Microsoft come, yeah. coming up and all the benefits of, of the applications and the rich experience that we got. Well, now the same thing's happening with performance-oriented storage. We don't want to keep it all locked up inside the equivalent of a storage mainframe and have the servers have to do these acrobatics to go get it and bring it forth. We want to put that process-critical data right into the server. And so we sort of refer to that framework as data decentralization. And you talk about the latency. Now, that's twofold, right? Because not only is the disk spinning, but there's all kinds of overheads associated with it, right? So in other words, why can't I just shove in a bunch of SSDs into an array, for well, example? Well, so you know, it's technically possible yeah. to do so. But one of the things that uh, you know happens in that uh, scenario is you're dealing with a lot of legacy storage protocols. So most frequent ones that we talk about are things like SATA or SAS, uh, you know, SCSI. SCSI. <laughs> and so, you know, those protocols were designed for rotating media and did a great job. SCSI actually was designed for tape, I think. Before that, I have to you know check my history books. But in yeah. the world of flash media, that doesn't always do justice to what flash memory is capable of. And so what uh, we advocate is let's put flash memory in the best position to succeed. Let's l allow it to put its best foot forward. And doing so means let's not let it you know, hide in the back of the data center behind all these interconnects and all of these protocols. Let's bring it face forward, process critical data close to the CPU because the goal here isn't necessarily just to make the storage faster. The goal is to keep the CPU humming. That is the key cog in the wheel and the utilization that we have to keep going in order to serve the data that we want, more data, more users, more quickly. Multi-core is a big factor there too, right? I mean, you got a lot of IOs coming out of, the, uh, out of Intel these days. Exactly, and so and as so. the server platforms scale in terms of the number of sockets that they uh, can hold, CPU sockets, and then the number of cores, we get this great scalability at the CPU layer, and we don't necessarily want that all to go through you know, one cable out to a storage array. How about having that available to the entire PCIe bus on that uh, server. So if that server might have four, eight, ten slots for PCIe, you can fill those with Fusion IO drives and get a really great parallelization between the CPU bandwidth and the flash memory. And RAM is too expensive and it's volatile. So now we're seeing a hierarchy emerge, John, with a whole new set of applications, right? Which is yeah. just your sweet spot, right? The yeah, whole I mean, so, so, so obviously you were here, Gary Arnstein, who's the uh, Vice President of Product Marketing for Fusion IO, innovator in uh, new kinds of storage, as I said, storage decent, data decentralization or storage decentralization, whatever you want to call it. Um, you guys are going public, so you really, you know, a lot of, lot of hype going on around Fusion IO, a lot of interesting data coming out from the competitors uh, knowing that you guys are you know our hot company um, and I wrote a post about this and I want to just ask you this um, and that is is that um, there are new companies out there that are in these new franchises the Zynga's the Facebook's the Twitter um, these new applications that are seeing massive scale massive that are scale. that are relying on things like very intensive database driven type applications custom open source coding um, Facebook and Twitter, you know, it's documented in their history about how they're homegrown and a lot of this stuff and operating at scale. And so you guys, you know, sell into these kinds of environments. And so, uh, you know, there was a some posts going around around the, the ideal market for you guys. And what I, one of the things I said was, it's not about selling into Facebook as a per unit thing or selling into Twitter as a per unit thing. It's about how many environments are going to look like Facebook. So the question to you is, what's the going on in the marketplace? Are more companies going to look like Facebook or more enterprises going to look like Facebook? How does a Facebook or a Twitter or a Zynga, people who are built on cloud, built on essentially high-scale data centers, cutting using cutting-edge techniques like SSD, how are they a proxy for what the future enterprise will look like? Yeah, the future I, think, service I think that's a great question. And I think we have to look at it. Certainly uh, companies that are operating at that scale with those kind of applications are a leading indicator of what might come in certain other markets. But at the same time, the applications of a company like a Facebook or a Zynga or a Twitter or something are very different from some of the classic enterprise applications. So I'm not sure it's a one-to-one -one type of relationship of, you know, if one of these large web scale companies is building their architecture like this today, we're going to see yeah. that in the enterprise in two years. I don't think we can draw necessarily such a... a not a one-to-one, -one, but one -to -one. A, a philosophical mindset or even sometimes a platform. I mean, they're using yeah. open source. <clears throat> There's a consumerization of IT trend that's being talked about Absolutely. here that's yeah. pretty heavily. I mean, I, you know, I think mobility what is, and I think cloud what it, and... I think what is interesting is that the the change in the amount of data, the amount of connectivity, and the need for speed 
is universal across these different markets. So whether you're in the web scale market or you're in the enterprise market, we're, everybody's dealing with those same three issues. And so uh, we might solve them a little differently. We might solve a solution for an Oracle database a little bit differently than we would solve a solution to serve you know, millions of photos to millions of users. But the underlying issues there are common, which is that we can no longer rely in today's world, more data, more users, more quickly, of going back to this rotating mechanical media in order to serve the data. So, you know, I don't well, know if that answers the question. Well, we, we, asked, we asked some of the you know, uh, people on the, at the Strata conference, you know, what's the top markets? And, you know, we thought, you know, I thought web would be, you know, large-scale web apps would be, or platforms would be number one. Yahoo, Facebook, Google. Right. But apparently, you know, government, government 2.0, military, healthcare, finance, these are verticals Geophysical, that are exploding. Utilities. Data. Yeah. So Smart grids. It's not just Facebook yeah. and Zynga and Yahoo. Yeah. yeah. It's these other verticals. I'll tell you one of the most interesting things I've seen uh, around is, is companies that are dealing with uh, essentially three workflows in one, which is they have to capture a whole bunch of data, often in real time. So if you think about things like capturing weather data or capturing some kind of sensor-related data, so there's that incoming stream. Then, of course, everybody wants to visualize or somehow make sense of that data in real time because we all you know, can't wait for half a second. And then the third thing going on at the same time is they, they likely can't keep all of that stuff that they need, so they need to decide how they're going to archive some of that data. So these three kind of workflows, the capture the real-time analysis and then the simultaneous deciding of, you know, how am I going to archive this? That's a really unique problem that you just can't solve with traditional technologies. And you need this kind of approach of take that process critical data, bring it right into the CPU, active data close to the processing, keep the processing humming, and deal with these workflows simultaneously. So, you know, the other thing is that um, I think that... Uh, you know, it, the, 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 the web stuff is, is very interesting and a great indicator of, of what's coming, but the enterprise market is really adopting this kind of technology en masse, and we see solutions. What are the drivers? The, what are the drivers? The drivers there are databases, and, you know, who doesn't want their database to go faster, right? So uh, keep in mind, you know, we talk a lot about applications, but the applications are supported by databases. So whether that's Oracle databases or Microsoft SQL Server or MySQL, we have the MySQL conference uh, coming up in Santa Clara, I think it's next week. Um, that, that's a tremendous area of interest. Flash cube opportunity. The, yeah. the other, uh, yeah, we, we better, we'll <laughs> see you back out there. We'll see you. There's no rest so, for the weary. Sorry, Deb. Um, <laughs> the other area is uh, is virtualization, and uh, and particularly we're seeing a lot of interest in virtual desktop infrastructure. One of the neat things about virtual desktop infrastructure, of course, is right. You can allow everybody to sign in and get that uh, virtual machine on the fly. Yep, yep. But if they're all at the same time, big you boot got storm, some dilemmas, yeah. big boot storm. So the very simple. Uh, architecture for uh, giving a boost to your virtual desktop infrastructure is to take that golden master and to take those clones of that operating system and put that on flash memory products such as uh, Fusion IO and boom, you know, all those problems go away and you can support more virtual machines per server than you could before. So what do you think about uh, VDI, virtual desktop, I, know, I, you know, I, desktop virtualization? I think, I think it's, it's here. You yeah. know, it's one of, it, it is isn't it not? Isn't it's, it's, the, it's, 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 it's been thin, talked about, but now we're kind of on the doorstep of mixed happening. Thin, it's the real thin client, right? Isn't it? It's the it's the final instantiation of what we were all hoping to see with just. I don't know. Oh, there I, comes I, my I'm, desktop infrastructure. I'm, I'm not sold yet. I mean, I, I, I'm happy Why? to be. What, I mean, what, what makes you not sold? Because um, I, I don't want to give up my desktop experience, you know, and I think most users don't. So if I'm a it, if I'm a claims is it operator, I, is it an iPhone. The, the, VDI as a tablet. Well, VDI? not today, right? Yeah, but if you're working in a large company, yeah. right, where you you're going in and you're logging in and and you know it's so much simpler in that environment to provision these virtual desktops. It's simpler for IT. I I would totally agree it's with simpler that. Simpler for IT. But the, from a user perspective, I don't want to give up that user experience, and so that's why. So I mean, you think but would hybrid. you know? I, I, would you know? I mean, I think we're getting to a point where you, some you of feel the, like it's transparent today to the user. You know, enterprise, maybe? we're not using virtual. I think uh, if you're a claims, uh, you know, adjuster, if you're working on the claims desk all day, or you're doing, you know, call center, yes, no, it, it fits there. But I think for the, what you were talking about, Gary, about the the thin client vision, the the the, the Scott McNeely vision of thin client, I don't think we're there yet. I, I think I don't think we're ever going to be there. You never yeah, have yeah. to take away hard it, disk from somebody. And They're going to have hard hard disk to play with. And I think it, it, because the the economics aren't there. For, for a virtual desktop. Yeah, but the economics the for, for companies that are deploying this clearly are there. 
right? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So for those use cases those where it works, it works great. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's but, where we're seeing a lot of okay. interest, right? For companies that want to deploy lots of virtual desktops to lots of lots of users, they're able to support you know more per server. I think I agree. With with I think I'm going to go with Gary on this one. <laughs> Because I think I I think it's here. I'll tell you why. I think that you know back in the PC era, back in I'd say early '90s, the notion you know when the 46 kind of hit, Pentium was right on the, on the on the next gen. You saw you saw a mass distribution of PCs, and every distributor or reseller at the time was basically doing basically burn disk because the resellers didn't want to load windows on every machine so you know from a bottleneck standpoint the dealers would i remember the days you know they would be like okay uh, fidelity investments or xyz wants to, you know 500 pcs this month <laughs> guys plugging in a freaking cd-rom pumping windows on it so say hey master disk burn all these hard drives and just install the hard drive so i think what he's referring to is on an enterprise, enterprise everyone's scale, desktop yeah. will have some vdi like app Right. You with, might have a you might storage. have a hybrid too, right? You might have a local desktop application or, or environment for the people who need that. Yep. Uh, but the ability to pull up a virtual desktop environment. So that's let's, my, so that's let's my talk angle. about what this means for Microsoft because Microsoft friggin' hates desktop virtualization. Yeah, right? they should. It's really disruptive yeah, to, to, to Microsoft. No, I mean, I mean they're they're they're, do, they're doing a lot of promotion around. Uh, of course they are, right? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. But so and when 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 desktop virtualization first started, you know, to come out, Microsoft was now poo pooing it. Right now, of course, Microsoft's embracing it because they don't want to. Because no one's they, upgrading Windows Seven. Well, Maybe so they like so. It but now. my point is this: we're going to test the lock-in that Microsoft has. And I actually think Microsoft has a, has plenty of knobs that they can turn to keep to keep the VDI camp economically less feasible. They'll just keep <laughs> ratcheting out, changing the licensing, you know, keeping those customers locked in and keep yeah, extracting it'll be very, that rent. It'll be you know? to watch. So lock-in is now passe, right? So would you agree? Lock-in uh, well, is passe? Let's see. Who, uh, so or has it ever been in vogue? Uh, I, I, uh, well, certainly Oracle has been. and Microsoft. Well, it depends. If you talk about from a vendor perspective or from an end user perspective, that's always been the end game. Yeah, vendors love vendors lock-in, lock-in, right? Sure. I mean, come on, who doesn't like lock-in? But you tell me, VMware doesn't have lock-in? I mean, they have a degree of lock-in, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean but I mean, as a, it's all about choices, right? <laughs> So yeah. does Google I mean, have lock-in? Well, I, do we have more choice than we did 10 years ago? So the, here, yeah, this is a yeah. digression, but it's know. a fun one. It was the fun. world better or worse when the only choice was an IBM laptop, Windows, BlackBerry, and Microsoft Exchange? I sometimes long for those years. Because so of the simplicity, it's right? It's so complicated. I only had yeah. a cell phone in my car, and which is great. I actually <laughs> <laughs> seen go play golf and do some things without so, a phone call. So I want to switch it up. What are some of the interesting things you've seen here at SNW this week? So I just got here about an hour ago and came right uh, into well, the Cube. The, the, most see. Of, the most important thing that's happened here at SNW is it's, it's the Cube is here. Yeah, the cube so is we are here, here live. Right. And We're validating SNW. So, so SNW <laughs> has finally stepped into the modern age of media by having us here. So, I've, just, I've been so, reading some of the stuff uh, that, that I've seen. No, seriously, a lot of cloud it's, stuff, right? It's, it's a, it's a, yeah, there's a whole cloud exhibit here yeah, okay. where they did a, an area where you know folks had a, a there were a collection of uh, smaller setups. I'll give you my two cents on this. Dave, the, Dave's uh, going to this cloud kind of, infrastructure. We, we haven't need debriefed yet, but my angle is this. The, the era of innovations, obviously, on SNW, they're using Silicon Valley as the kind of place to kind of, you know, domicile around innovation. So is this the first time that SNW has been held in Silicon Valley? I, I was that told I can remember. that in the old days it was held here, but certainly for the first time in the last five or six years. That so it's believe. an old show. You guys know it's my first time, and I know about the big whales that were here. But you know, in essence, you know, storage has changed. It's changing, right? And you guys, yeah. you know that. You're at Fusion I.O. So, so innovation is the theme. I think that's just more of a kind of a bumper sticker to get people pumped up but the theme i've heard from people is twofold cloud and ssd this is a f- about flash flash memory heard a yeah. lot of people flash this flash that and uh, david floyer from wikibon and i were talking at lunch performance is a hot one yeah so to me this is coming out of the, the underlying thread here is performance 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 yeah In performance is important but you know what, what i what i like to share with folks is performance is often the thing that drives people to these kind of solutions but but it also has there has to be a kicker for cost savings, right? Performance without some cost savings is just you know you're just sort of off for having fun. And so what we find uh, with with uh, our customers is that yeah, performance will bring them in the door, will will attract people to a particular solution. But if they don't immediately see some cost savings in terms of uh, consolidation of infrastructure or the need to postpone the purchase of additional infrastructure, some hard dollar savings, yeah. then it's no longer interesting. So it's really a one-two punch. It's can we reach some new threshold that's going to allow us to do more than we were able to do previously 
But then two, can we pay for that with the savings that we're going to get by using less equipment or not having to buy new equipment? Yeah, yeah. So people, some of the so equipment. people who have a database performance problem throw spindles at it, they throw compute at it, and... And, and they don't solve the problem, is what you're saying, right? Yeah, I mean, we so. have a number of case studies where people talk about, you know, I was trying to uh, add more spindles to this configuration. That was, and that's been before, you know, Flash Media came onto the scene. That was the recommended method for achieving more performance. So people try that and then realize, you know what, this, this really isn't getting me where I need to go. So I need to take a major step forward. It doesn't scale the way they need it to scale. It doesn't scale the yeah. way they need to. It's you know, it's very hard to configure disks for performance, very hard to configure disks for IO operations per second, which then translate into transactions per second for a database or an application. Uh, so they'll say, how do I how do I move off of that? And yeah, in the meantime, all this infrastructure for housing all of these disk drives can be repurposed. And so that is a major cost savings from a dollar perspective. The thing that, it's a common thread uh, thing in, in, along those lines is that um, two things are happening. Um, everyone's trying to think about what's next while it's trying to figure out the, what's happening today. Right. That's a comment we heard from uh, the entrepreneur earlier. Um, but to me, the common thread on that equation is economics and value-add have to be tied together. So it's not just an economic game. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, save money. Sure. So whether it's cloud or whatever you're, whatever you're porting to this new environment, this right. innovation that's happening, uh, ultimately is about change, right? So yeah. change is the, key, is the key. But in the change equation is economics and value add. And it's an and equation. Economics and yeah, value add. Yeah, you can't add. just have one. So that's kind of the common theme. And all the best companies we, we hear from, like from you guys and on is that that's the value add component has to be a major kicker. It can't be, oh, a nice to have. It's like big value add, whether it's, you know, obviously database performance for you guys or something else. So... You know that's that's kind of our filter, right? Absolutely. So uh, <coughs> Dave stepped out. Oh, yeah. So back. we got to uh, we got we got we're wait, woefully behind schedule here. We okay. okay. Well, thanks very much, guys, for uh, for having me on. It was thanks, a pleasure. Gary. Always See a pleasure you again, seeing, as you. Good always. seeing you. Great and uh, you'll be able to put this to use in the uh, video machine, or yeah, well, I hope so. It? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Can we get thanks. some of the streams? Right, so okay, we're gonna bring Scott.